This is rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine and already we're at part 10, machining the flywheel and painting the parts. This is a shot of the larger of the two lathes that I have. This one is a Smart and Brown Model 1024 and it's a great machine. I think it's a tool room lathe, it's got a very wide bed, it's very substantial but not a great deal of centre height and it's only just big enough for this flywheel which is 12 inches in diameter. But before I can machine this flywheel and the lathe, I need to make a stub mandrel to mount it on. And as usual, once you start machining a mandrel, it must never be removed from the chuck until the job is completed. So what I'm doing at the moment is getting the finished size so that the flywheel is a snug fit on the mandrel. The reason for having to do this is that the flywheel is quite badly damaged, it's very badly marked and it's extremely rusty. So rather than just clean it up with emery cloth and it ends up looking nasty, I thought I would treat it to a quick bit of TLC by cleaning it up in the lathe. I'm only taking fine cuts off this piece of metal. I do not want to go mad and cut it under size. And there you saw me try the flywheel on for size. So we are getting quite close at this point. When you watch these videos, I am actually doing the job for real. I have not staged the job for the camera. Sometimes when I'm using the camera, I have to look into the camera's monitor to see what I'm doing, to make sure I've got the image in focus and in the right position, etc. And sometimes this can prove difficult because I am a man and allegedly I cannot multitask, so my wife tells me. But anyway, here's some Loctite 603 and I'm going to coat the finished mandrel and then I'm going to press on the flywheel using the tailstock. Leaving it for an hour or so for the Loctite to fully cure, it's time to machine it. I'm taking a very light cut across the face here as you can see and it's cleaning up quite well. I've already taken a cut down the front surface of the flywheel but underneath all the filth and rust it was quite badly chatter marked. I'm using a file and now some sandpaper to get a good finish on the flywheel. This flywheel material is not the best piece of cast iron I've ever worked on. It's a little patchy but it's looking a lot better than it did. Many times over the years I have intended to make a tool post grinder which would be brilliant to remove chatter marks on an old flywheel like this but unfortunately I never got round to it so I don't have one. What I do have though is one of these, this is an orbital sander and this removes chatter marks in cast iron very well. I would have videoed this part of the operation but as I was in such a state of excitement about the next part of the process which is what you see here painting I actually forgot to press the record button on the camera. I will leave it to your imagination to figure out how I removed all the chatter marks from the flywheel using an orbital sander. Painting steam engine flywheels is strangely therapeutic. No matter how many times I paint a flywheel, I always seem to miss a part. And I turn it over and go over it, and I generally give the thing a couple of coats. Sometimes I get it in two coats. So after I've painted one side, a quick check, and I turn the flywheel over and repeat the process on the other side. I can't really believe it's come to this, getting excited about turning over a flywheel to paint the other side. When I was younger, so much younger than today, I was a professional musician. I was playing at different venues all over the country, and there was plenty of sex, drugs and rock and roll. Thinking about it, I don't remember much sex from those days. I seemed to be very busy at the time, practicing Hammond organ and piano, and actually playing seven nights a week. And the drugs, well, the doctor gave me some Valium, that just kept me calm. And the rock and roll, yes, there was plenty of that, plenty of music, plenty of rock and roll, so I enjoyed that part of my life. And now, I paint steam engines. Thankfully, I don't have to do it all the time, because I do find the repetition of painting these parts incredibly boring. After all that, I must say, though, that this paint is wonderful stuff to use. Again, it's by Precision Paints, and it's GNR Loco Green. That's Great Northern Railway Locomotive Green, and it's a good colour match to the original. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.